Number 33, use the standard free energy of formation data in Appendix G to determine the free energy change for each of the following reactions, which are run under standard state conditions and are at 25 degrees Celsius. Then we have to identify each reaction as either spontaneous or not spontaneous at these conditions. Okay, so our balanced equation that we have here is CH4 gas plus O2 gas yields carbon graphite form plus 2H2O gas. Okay, now they want us to find that free energy change. Now free energy is Gibbs free energy. That's the full name. So the variable is in the scientist who, you know, invented this idea. Gibbs, so it would be a G. The change is that delta value. So we're looking for a delta G. Now, since we're using standard values, we're under standard state conditions, we're going in the back of a textbook, I'm solving delta G notch. That notch, that just means that you're dealing with standard state values from a textbook. So I went to the back of a textbook to find out what each individual delta G value is. Now, when you're looking for H2O, just be careful. There's gas values and liquid values. So just make sure that you pull the gas value and not the liquid one. Now, we have all of the delta G values. What are we going to do with it? Well, we have to use the formula that only has delta G's in it, which is this one right here. Delta G for the whole entire reaction, Rx n is reaction, is the sum, that's this symbol, so the sum of all of your delta G products minus the sum of all of your delta G reactants. So in essence, it's products minus reactants. Now, are these values going to remain the same or are they gonna be different? Well, it all goes by your coefficients in the front of your balanced equation. You have no number in front of the CH4, no number in front of the O2, no number in front of the carbon, but a two in front of the H2O. For all the ones that you have no number, remember that's just one of them. But then for the H2O, we have two. For every number that you have, that's what you're going to multiply your value by. So just for practice purposes, negative 50.5 would be multiplied by one because that's the coefficient that's in front of the CH4. Zero would be multiplied by one because it's 102. Zero would be multiplied by one because that's the carbon value. And then for the H2O, you would have to take the negative 228.59 and times it by two. Now you have to sum it up. Literally, on the balanced equation, it's CH4 plus O2. So it would be this value plus this value. And anything plus zero is the same number. So we can just know what this number is. This would just be negative 50.5. So that's cool. Coming over to the product side, it's the same thing. Carbon plus H2O. So zero plus two times negative 228.59. Let's find out what that is. Calc time. So two times negative 228.59. And we get negative 457.18. So we have our summed up values. We take that and plug it in to our equation. Delta G for the whole entire reaction would be the sum of the products, which is the negative 457.18 minus the reactants, which is negative 50.5. Minus a negative is plus a positive, but we can put this into the calculator, which I will do. You'll see that it's the same answer. So delta G for the whole entire reaction is, I'm gonna take this value, no rounding in intermediate uh, uh, calculations, right? Minus a negative 50.5, enter that out. Now, technically it is a negative 406.68. However, sig pig purposes, this is going out to the hundredths place. This is going out only to the tenths place so you could only have a tenths place in your answer. So this 68, this would round to just a seven. 
And that is the final answer. Delta G for your reaction would be kilojoules because these uh, coefficients that you multiplied by, those are your moles. So if you're starting with kilojoule per mole and you're timesing by your mole values, which is your coefficients, the moles cancel out and you're left with just kilojoules. So that's the reasoning behind that. First answer, done. Now we have to figure out, is this spontaneous or is this non-spontaneous? Well, here's the information that we need to know. Anytime that you have a delta G value of less than zero, that's a negative, your reaction will be spontaneous. That means that you don't need any extra energy from an outside source to make this reaction run. It runs on itself or it runs by itself. Delta G of a positive value, greater than zero, that means it's non-spontaneous and needs extra help from like an outside source of energy. Since this is a negative, it doesn't need that extra push. So this equation or this delta G value, this uh, reaction would be spontaneous. And that is the end for that. Let's box that off. Beautiful. And there you go. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out. Love talking to you guys. Hope you guys are having a great day. Keep studying hard and tell your friends, tell your classmates about this channel. Love to help you guys out. Physics and math are also on the video uh, the channel right now. So maybe we can help you with that. More subjects to come. Okay, bye-bye.